teenagers are people. And even though the future looms especially large in their young lives, they're primarily interested, like everybody else, in the present. Our teenage years, they're a time when we build our relationships and develop who we are. A time when we shape our personal identity. Teenagers of 2021 are part of the generation called iGen. They're growing up with smartphones and have social media accounts by the time they're in high school. They don't remember a time before the internet and their lives are heavily influenced by smartphones and social media. In fact, today's average teen now spends seven hours a day looking at a screen. That's right, seven hours a day. The average teenager now spends more than seven hours per day looking at a screen. So what kind of people will they become when they get older? And what will it mean for our future? And what kind of people are they now? Do they have a social life? The answer is simple. Teens are spending less time interacting face to face and more time on their phones. David tonight, two for two, a lead off single here in the fourth. And every girl in the picture is locked into her phone. Compared to teens before smartphones existed, today they're placing less value on socializing in person. It logically follows then that teens today are fubbing or phone snubbing their family. When a teenager fubs their parents, their parents may interpret it as a sign of disrespect. This leads parents to try to restrict their teen's smartphone use. Unfortunately, this tends to do more harm than good, resulting in trust issues and increasing tension in the relationship. Of course, teens aren't the only ones fubbing. Parents may also fub their children and spouses. In fact, it's not unusual for the whole family to be distracted on their smartphones, even when they're all in the same room. So what about their friends? Do teens fub them too? It's like offensive, like if like, you don't want to talk to me and you rather just like look at your phone. It's not just relationships that fubbing damages. It's also our mental and emotional well-being. It doesn't matter if you're a fubby or a fubber. In the game of fubbing, everyone loses. But if face-to-face -face communication is in our evolutionary nature, why do we choose to look at a screen instead? Don't we want to socialize? Regrettably, there are apps for that. Teens are channeling their desire to socialize on social media platforms. They don't go out and party. They don't rebel. They prefer to stay at home with their parents and their phones. Something that would have been considered absurd just a decade or two ago. Present-day teens don't develop their identity apart from their parents. So what's the result? Teens attempt to develop their own identity and place in society based on the feedback they receive on social media. They crave affirmation of their self-worth by seeking likes, thumbs up, and comments. And it doesn't matter if the feedback is from total strangers. They're constantly measuring themselves up to the unrealistic standards of the people they encounter on social media. Inevitably, this leads to teens being disappointed in themselves. Young adults who use social media are never satisfied, the cycle never ending. 
Their initial desire for validation transformed into a second nature need. They cannot tolerate the frustrations of the real world, unlike teens of the past, choosing instead the digital world because it's easier. We're creating a habit of distractions. Yes. We're training our kids to keep interrupting themselves, which means they can't do anything hard because they seek that interruption. Because of this, they end up depressed, emotionally unstable, and more likely to become mentally ill. And if all this wasn't enough, Negative, hurtful comments from trolls and bullies can further lower a teen's self-esteem. But yet another danger looms for teens who overuse social media. Sexual predators. Unfortunately, there is a shockingly high percentage of them and they're soliciting young adults into engaging in sexting, or worse. I've been asked for naked photos before, and like Instagram just now. Yeah, it's quite common. And there's lots of Instagram accounts of people asking anybody to like, direct message them any naked photos they have. And yeah. then all their friends that go on their tag photos can mm -hmm. see it. Thus begins a violent cycle of trafficking using an item your child probably already has access to, a smartphone. The more time you're online or engaged with the phone, the more risks can come through that device. Children 12 to 15 years old are the prime age for solicitation because of their desire for friends and attention. They are getting themselves caught up in this kind of underworld of social media and they lose touch with everything else. They'll isolate the child, they'll turn the child against the parent. I'm the only person that really understands you, I really love you. And pretty soon, this person has the trust of your child and your child is walking out the door and leaving with this person. When it comes to the allure of the online and social media world, there's another facet we need to consider. Today's teen craves fame. The TV culture they grew up with is somewhat responsible for this. Welcome to Hollywood! But like any time something is uploaded online, teens who post photos and videos can receive a blow to their self-esteem if what they posted wasn't well received. So why do young adults continue to be so captivated by their phones, even though they're making their lives miserable? It's simple, they're addicted. These platforms are manipulating people by engendering in them a compelling urge to check their updates, a strong feeling of need to stay ahead of current events, or even more manipulative, of social obligation. In this way, teens, along with most of the population, are being trained by their smartphones, trained to feel the need to check their social media apps constantly trained into requiring constant positive affirmation and pleasing updates, trained into easily losing focus, suffering ADHD-like symptoms. And that's not all. When two people interact face-to-face, -face, the speaker exchanges ideas with the listener, even if the listener doesn't agree with them. This allows learning to take place and at the very least, creates an awareness of new ideas or arguments that may go against what someone previously thought. So what happens over time when someone is only exposed to ideas in the form of biased, potentially fake news, ads, and posts by other users selected by social media platforms in order to agree with and reinforce their own personal beliefs? They become polarized shut off from opposing opinions, they can't imagine a world where they could be wrong. Anyone who goes against their beliefs? Stupid, illogical, or crazy. To add fuel to the flame, 
There's a tool which was designed to mesmerize users and keep them wasting time on their social media platforms. They make more money the more time people spend. And it's been an overwhelming success. It's called Endless Scroll. Endless Scroll takes advantage of the human desire to explore the unknown. You have a brain that is wired for what in psychology is called seeking behavior. Something new, something stimulating, something different. You're exploiting a vulnerability in human psychology. And just like a drug, the brain reacts by releasing dopamine as it encounters new information. We found that if you don't give your mind or your brain the time to catch up with your impulses, you don't give people stopping cues, you just, you just keep scrolling. We were using our design techniques and it became so powerful that it just addicts people. It's a fact. Many smartphone users are just like drug users. Their brains change in similar ways to real chemical addicts. That sounds nuts. So these are little electronic drug delivery devices. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. But it doesn't end there. Smartphone addiction also leads to a detrimental effect on sleep. And less sleep means higher rates of anxiety, depression, and other mental illnesses. Grouped with fubbing, weak self-identities, and the inability to focus, sleep deprivation is setting teens up for probable disaster. So, if you're a teen, how do you know if your smartphone use is out of hand? Are you a smartphone addict? You might be one, if you. Immediately check your phone after any notification is received, even in the middle of class. Would rather go without shoes for a week than be without your phone. Experience nomophobia when you're afraid to be away from your phone even only for an instant. Sacrifice sleep instead of losing out on time with your phone. Can't fall asleep without your phone right next to you. And in the morning, can't get out of bed without it. Stay locked up in your room, glued to your phone, instead of going out with your girlfriend. You also scroll through Instagram while driving. Kids are not activating these brain areas. Those areas that learn empathy are only active when you do nothing, when you daydream. And that's something today's teenagers don't do.